Nike Forus the second Ficas was Byzantine emperor from 963 to 969. His brilliant military exploits contributed to the resurgence of the Byzantine Empire during the 10th century. Early Exploits Nike Forus Ficas was born in about 912 and belonged to a Cappadocian family which had produced several distinguished generals including Nike Furrow's father Badis Fakas, brother Leo Fakas, and grandfather Nike Forrest Fakas the Elder, who had all served as commanders of the field army. His mother, whose name is unknown, was a member of another powerful Anatolian clan, the Malinois. Nike Forrest joined the army at an early age. He was appointed the military governor of the Anatolicon theme in 945 under Emperor Constantine VII. When his father was wounded in battle in 953, Nike Forus was promoted to supreme commander on the eastern frontier. In the war with the Abbasid Caliphate under al-Muti, Nike Forus began with a severe defeat in 954, from which he recovered in the following years with victories in Syria, starting in 957. From the accession of Emperor Romanos II in 959, Nike Forus and his younger brother Leo were placed in charge of the eastern and western field armies, respectively. In 960, 27,000 oarsmen and marines were assembled to man a fleet of 308 ships carrying 50,000 troops. At the recommendation of the influential minister Joseph Bringers, Nike Forus was entrusted to lead this expedition against the Saracen Emirate of Crete. After a nine-month siege, Nike Forus stormed Chandaks and wrested control of the entire island from the Muslims in 961. Upon returning to Constantinople, he was denied the usual honor of a triumph, permitted only a mere ovation in the Hippodrome. He soon returned to the east with a large and well-equipped army. In the campaigns of 962-963, he employed a brilliant strategy to conquer the cities of Cilicia and to advance into Syria. There he captured Aleppo, in collusion with his nephew, John Zemiscus, but they made no permanent conquests. It was on these campaigns that he earned the sobriquet, the pale death of the Saracens. During the capture of Aleppo, the Byzantine army took possession of 390,000 silver dinars, 2,000 camels, and 1,400 mules. Early in his life Nike Forus had married Stefano. She had died before he rose to fame, and after her death he took in oath of chastity. This would create problems later on. Accession to the throne. On 15 March 963, Emperor Romanos II died unexpectedly at the age of 26 of uncertain cause. Both contemporary sources and later historians seem to either believe that the young emperor had exhausted his health with the excesses of his sexual life and his heavy drinking, or suspect Empress Theophana, his wife, of poisoning him. Theophana had already gained a reputation as an intelligent and ambitious woman. She would later gain a reputation for ruthlessness in achieving her goals. Romanos had already crowned as co-emperors his two sons, Basil II and Constantine VIII. At the time that Romanos died, however, Basil was five years old and Constantine only three years old, so Theophana was named regent. Theophana was not allowed to rule alone. Joseph Bringers, the eunuch palace official who had become Romano's chief counselor, maintained his position. According to contemporary sources he intended to keep authority in his own hands. He also tried to reduce the power of Nike Forus for Cass. The victorious general had been accepted as the actual commander of the army and maintained his strong connections to the aristocracy. Joseph was afraid that Nike Forus could claim the throne with the support of both the army and the aristocracy. Joseph's intrigues during the following months turned both Theophana and Nike Forus against him. 
unknown to Joseph, Nikephorus was urged to seize the throne by his nephew John Zemiscus, and he entered into negotiations with Theophana. With the help of Theophana and the patriarch, Nikephorus Phakas received supreme command of the eastern forces and, after being proclaimed emperor by them on 2 July 963, he marched upon the capital, where his partisans had overthrown his enemy bringers. Thanks to his popularity with the army, Nikephorus II Phikas was crowned emperor by the side of Romanos's young sons on 16 August 963, and in spite of the opposition of the patriarch, he married their mother, the regent Theophana. Later campaigns Nikephorus II Phikas waged numerous wars throughout his reign. His first campaign as an emperor was waged against the Hamdanid Emirate of Aleppo between 961 and 962. His aim was not to conquer the emirate, but to terminate its role as a regional power. The city of Aleppo was thoroughly sacked and its forces destroyed, but its territories were not annexed. From 964 to 966, he led an army of 40,000 men which conquered Cilicia and conducted raids in Mesopotamia and Syria, while the patrician knight Astyorkautzes recovered Cyprus. In 968, Nikephorus conducted a raid which reached the city of Tripoli, raiding and sacking most of the fortresses along his path. His aim was to cut off Antioch from its allies. The city was unsuccessfully blockaded two times in 966 and 968, so the emperor decided to take it by hunger and left a detachment of 1,500 men in the fort of Bagras, which lies on the road from Antioch to Alexandretta. The commander of the fort, the Patrikios Michael Boatzis, disobeyed the emperor's orders and took Antioch with a surprise attack. Supported by the troops of the Stratopedarch Petros, eunuch of the Fikas family, Bortzis was disgraced for his insubordination, and later joined the plot that killed Fikas. On his northern frontier, he began a war in 967 against Bulgaria, to which the Byzantines had been paying tribute. Nikephorus revoked the tribute and bribed King Sviatoslav I of Kiev to attack Bulgaria. His invasion was so effective that Nikephorus renewed the alliance with Bulgaria and turned against his Kievan ally. Nikephorus II was less successful in his western wars. After renouncing his payments of tribute to the Fatimid Caliphs, he sent an expedition to Sicily under his illegitimate cousin Manuel Fakas son of Leo the Elder, but was forced by defeats on land and sea to evacuate the island completely. In 967, he made peace with the Fatimids of Kairawin and turned to defend himself against their common enemy, Otto I, who had proclaimed himself Western Emperor and had attacked Byzantine possessions in Italy. After some initial successes, however, his generals were defeated and driven back to the southern coast. The tension between east and west resulting from the policies pursued by Nikephorus may be glimpsed in the unflattering description of him and his court by Bishop Leopold of Cremona in his Relatia de Legationa Constantinopolitana. His description of Nikephorus was clouded by the ill treatment he received while on a diplomatic mission to Constantinople. Nikephorus, a man of war, was not good at diplomacy. To add insult to injury, Pope John XIII sent a letter to Nikephorus while Leoprand was in Constantinople calling Otto the first emperor of Rome and even more insultingly referring to Nikephorus merely as emperor of the Greeks. Leoprand failed in his goal of procuring an imperial princess as a wife for Otto's young son, the future emperor Otto II. Civil administration Due to the care he lavished upon the army, Nikephorus II was compelled to exercise rigid economy in other departments. He retrenched court largesse and curtailed the immunities of the clergy, and while he had an ascetic disposition, he forbade the foundation of new monasteries. 
By his heavy imposts and the debasement of the coinage he forfeited his popularity with the people and gave rise to riots. Lastly, he was forsaken by his wife, and, in consequence of a conspiracy she headed with his nephew and her lover John Zemiscus, he was assassinated in his sleeping apartment. Following his death, the Fircas family broke into insurrection under Nykforo's nephew Badis Fircas, but their revolt was promptly subdued. Nykforos was the author of extant treatises on military tactics, most famously the Preceptor Militaria, which contains valuable information concerning the art of war in his time, and the less known on skirmishing, which concerned guerrilla-like tactics for defense against a superior enemy invasion force, though it is likely that this latter work, at least, was not composed by the emperor but rather for him. Translator and editor George T. Dennis suggests that it was perhaps written by his brother Leo Fercas, then domestic of the West. Nykforos was a very devout man, and he helped his friend, the monk Athanasios, found the monastery of Great Lavra on Mount Athos. Contemporary Descriptions in Bishop Liet Pran's description of Nykforos, a clearly biased source, he is described as a monstrosity of a man, a pygmy, fat-headed and like a mole as to the smallness of his eyes, disgusting with his short, broad, thick, and half hoary beard, disgraced by a neck an inch long, very bristly through the length and thickness of his hair, in color an Ethiopian, one whom it would not be pleasant to meet in the middle of the night with extensive belly, lean of loin, very long of hip considering his short stature, small of shank, proportioned as to his heels and feet, clad in a garment costly but too old, and foul-smelling and faded through age, shod with cisione and shoes, bold of tongue, a fox by nature, in perjury, and lying a Ulysses. Whereas Bishop Leotprand describes the emperor's hair as being bristly, Leo the deacon says it was black with tight curls and unusually long family. By his first marriage to an unnamed Malina, Nykforos II Fikas had a son, Bardis Fikas, who died before 969. By his second marriage to Empress Theophana, Nykforos II had no children. Assassination With unrest mounting around him, his second wife Theophana took as her lover Nykforos II's nephew and general Don Zemiscus. Theophana and Zemiscus would meet in secret and plot Nykforo's death, with the plot eventually growing to include others, namely Michael Boatzis and his servant Theodorus, Leo Ballantus and Leo Pediasimos, one of Zemiscus' trusted retainers. On a blustery night, the conspirators went into the palace dressed as women. Nykforus was warned that assassins were in the palace, and he demanded the palace be searched. The guards left the room of the Empress unsearched, however, and the assassins avoided capture. Later, when Nykforis was asleep on the floor before the holy icons, Zemiscus and the others sneaked into his bedchamber, alarmed at first to find the bed empty. Aroused by the noise, Nykforis rose just as one of the assassins swung his sword in an attempt to decapitate him. It struck him in the face, and he was then dragged to the foot of the bed where Zemiscus sat. Zemiscus then shouted, Tell me, most senseless and malicious tyrant, was it not through my actions that you attained the heights of Roman power? How therefore did you pay no regard to such a good service? How, blinded by malice and madness, did you thus not hesitate to remove me, your helper, from command of the army? His head was cut off and paraded on a spike, while his body was thrown out the window. He was buried at the Church of the Holy Apostles, and John Zemiscus became Emperor John I. An inscription carved on the side of his tomb reads, you conquered all but a woman. John Julius Norwich says, It was a honorable place, but Nykforus focus, the white death of the Saracens, hero of Syria and Crete, saintly and hideous, magnificent and insufferable, had deserved a better end. Descendants During the last decades of the 10th century, the Focards repeatedly tried to get their hands again on the throne. 
and almost succeeded when Nike Furrow's nephew, Bardis Fakaz the Younger, rebelled against the rule of Basil II. His death, possibly by cardiac arrest, put an end to the rebellion, and ultimately to the political prominence of the Focards, although his own son, Nike Forus for Casperi Trachulus, launched another abortive revolt in 1022 along with Nike Forus Siphias. Modern honours. On 19 November 2004, the Hellenic Navy named its 10th Corten Air Class frigate in his honour as Nikki Forus Fokker's F-466. Also, in the Rithymno Regional Unit in Crete, a municipality is named after him, as are many streets throughout Greece.